Okay. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So, um, I've been asked to uh, talk something about a mind training today. So, um, first of all, right, um, um, the most important thing, um, it doesn't matter eh, whether, whether it is um, religious or or it is spiritual, or it is some, um, you know, our personal work, right? The most important thing is to understand why we are, or why you are doing it, right? The purpose. Yeah, so we need to make sure that we know why we are doing it, you know, what's the benefit of doing this thing, right? So, um, So for me, right, for me to be a Buddhist was not a choice, as everyone know. You know, when I was when I was young, I was recognized by His Holiness for the first as a reincarnation of you know some Rinpoche, and yeah, that's it. And uh, some of uh, my monastery monk from. To bed, they came to my home, uh, hometown and picked me up. Um, as my parents, you know, they kind of like agree that you know they can take um, their own son to a monastery, right? So yeah, to to yeah, um, I had no choice to become a Buddhist monk. I just uh, sort of like forced into you know uh, into a Buddhist monk life, you know, monkhood. Yeah, but for many people, they have their, they have choice. Mm, so, um, so, so that's what I'm saying, right? We have to know why we, why you are doing it, right? For example, you know, that's how I always um, um, uh, share that. In Buddhist, as a Buddhist, right, what we must do is, you know, uh, as we say, um, you know, listening and contemplating and meditation, right? So now these three things, like, are, is the way of practicing. It's, 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 how, it's how we are supposed to uh, spend our time being Buddhist, right? So... But we need to know, like, why do we need to listen? Like, why we are listening to, uh, to to the teachings of Buddha, you know, and or from your teachers, right? Why? Because the purpose of listening to the teaching is to, so we can concentrate, so we can contemplate on the teaching. That's the only purpose for us to listen. Then what's the, what is the purpose of listening or the contemplating on um, teachings? Because the purpose for us to uh, contemplate on teachings of Buddha and our teachers is to do meditation, to meditate upon those teachings. That's why, right? So these are the purpose. So, and why, what's the purpose of doing meditation? Is because, so we can create a counter habit, you know, because a meditation is a, is, is a tool to create a, you know, habit which counter our bad habits, right? So we are creating a good habit to counter the bad habit, right? So now why we have to, you know, get rid of all those habits, you know, because to attain enlightenment, right? To, let's say, to uh, see the truth. That was the purpose of seeing the truth because to attain enlightenment. That's how we are supposed to get rid of everything, right? Mm, you know, those, well, um, okay, we can talk about it like a little bit later, right? So that's the purpose. So that then, then one, when you achieve enlightenment, 
why uh, was the purpose of achieving enlightenment because we should not as as we should never forget as we say you know for all sentient beings may i achieve enlightenment so i can help them in you know my full ability right and full ability can only be achieved when you attain enlightenment right because at that time nothing can stop you from helping uh, those sentient beings unless they don't have any you know uh they don't uh, do the, they are not willing to be helped by buddhas teach buddhas or bodhisattvas or they don't care or they don't have any karma right yeah so the only thing at that time only thing that well um those people might be stopped from you know getting help from buddha and bodhisattva is totally themselves so basic thing the, 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 the point is that why we have to achieve enlightenment because as we right um, mahayana practitioner before all things as we, as, as holiness for the second say you know the intention is very important right the motivation is very important so that's why we generate the mind of bodhicitta right then at that time as we, we say you know for all sentient beings may i achieve enlightenment because why i want to help them so at the end the ultimate um, the purpose for every this you know like hard work all those um you know day and nights of our uh, practices uh, listening contemplating meditating seeing the truth all those things for what it all comes back to you know uh, love and compassion you know, to help those sentient beings from uh, suffering you know free them from suffering so that's the purpose right it's you know that's the purpose so but but right of now what is really happening is that the more we learn the more arrogant we become you know really um the more we get closer to the to our own teachers and guru the more possessive the more uh um authoritative we become see now why this is this all are happening is because we are actually forgetting the purpose of all these you know buddhist thing that's why so that's what i'm saying you know we have to be clear if we become if we become buddhist so we can get close to our teacher and we can be possessive and can be authoritative or or we can brag up to other people you know see i've already learned buddhism for last you know 10 years and my teachers i'm a very good practitioner maybe you know uh, uh he uh, sometimes he even point to me that oh you are kind of like special person you know so that's why i'm so i think you know i'm someone you know they, they have this self claim buddha and bodhisattva we can see a lot of those things right why these are happening is because we totally forget the purpose of all these things you know right so that's what i'm saying because um in um, back in like five or six years ago and we had a meeting you know we had like a workshop at that time we were saying oh why so um there's so many monks are leaving monastery you know for for to be uh you know this uh to be uh to be a, like a kfc you know worker or mcdonald worker in the united states why they are leaving they were like a question and some were so this there there was a few people were saying oh you know because monastery food is not really good you know that there's no salary for those teachers you know there's no any um uh, substantial um finance for those uh, teachers those workers who spend you know like half of their life in the monastery and there is like for me you know jokingly i said because since i'm super big fan of swimming you know i said the only reason if i leave you know my monastery would be like there's no swimming pool that's why i left monastery jokingly say that i did but to be honest you know it's it's my very mm, how to say uh like mm, small minded um suggestion or thought it might be but what i really think you know is because most of the time when we recruit those young monks right to become a monk young kids to become a monk is because there's no they didn't they didn't become a monk with renunciation 
that's the that's the reason why, you know, that's the reason uh, uh, we call them, you know, Rabtu Chua in Tibetan, right? And in Chinese, they call Tu Jaren, right? The one who left their home, right? So there's no certain, there's no such, you know, renunciation mind. That's why all, you know, after like 10 years in monastery, five years in monastery, after they've grown up, they leave a monastery, you know, like mostly without any hesitation, right? That's why. So there is no purpose to become a monk. For us, you know, for the, 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 the ch in charge of monastery, because we recruited monk because we are lacking of monk, you know, monastery and it requires monk, right? So we try our best to get as much as we want. But for those kids, I don't blame them. But the reason why when they're grown up, they leave the monastery is because they don't have a, the proper renunciation mind. To be honest, there's no anything called renunciation mind when they were um, um, entered the monastery, right? So that's why they leave. It's exactly the same like that. For us, if it was to be, you know, um, uh, possessive, you know, so problematic um, person, that's the purpose, then yeah, I don't blame, but that's the, not the purpose, you know, if you are following proper Buddhist um, teaching, that's, the not, that's, 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 that's not the purpose, right? So that's why, so that's why uh, I'm saying, you know, to understand and never forgetting the purpose of all things, right? So that's why I was very touched um, from our previous session that, you know, there might be a lot of, you know, uh, uh, people with great precept that they're holding, be holding in their, um, in their mind, you know, precept, but among them, the one who have a love and compassion who is willing to help other people, right? That's the person that we must respect the most among those people with such precept, right? So that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. So, so uh, mm, the purpose, we must not forget about the purpose. Yeah. And and one even more serious thing, right, is that, is that now when we become a Buddhist, right, as I say, right, our, our uh, purpose to become Buddhism is to achieve enlightenment, right? Now that's the, okay, we didn't become a Buddhism, we didn't become a Buddhist, so we can be happy. So we can have a, you know, we, so we can be um, like uh, financially successful. No, not at all, right? So that's why. So 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 now, what what it takes for us to become enlightened, right? What it take uh, takes to become enlightenment now. This is very important. Now, what's the, that was the thing, as we say, we are, as, we, as we know, you know, uh, listening, contemplating, and meditate, meditating. But even more important is our own mindset. Because people think, you know, people take this Buddhist, Buddhist thing like very, very lightly. Like, oh, I'm Buddhism. You know, I, I'm, I'm Buddhist. I'm practicing Buddhism. So, uh, I have to be a very happy person. Okay, all those things are okay, but but what? Because it doesn't matter, you know, you drink our water or you walk toward the Bodhigaya Stupa. All those time, what we cannot forget is but why we are doing this thing. Because to become enlightened so we can help sentient beings, right? Now, what it takes to become Buddha is a mindset. Because for most of those uh, um, 
most of um, how to say newcomer, you know, to Buddhism world, they think like, oh, you know, do good deeds, um, be more generous, uh, you know, spend some more time with, um, you know, Bodhicitta Avatara, and that's how you will become a you know better Buddhist. Okay, that's all thing, but we need to know the core, right? To change our mindset is very, very, very important, really. The reason why I say that we need to change our um, mindset is because all the definitions, right? All the definition that you see in Buddhist teachings about certain things, about let's say karma. For those new people, what is karma? You know, mostly generally what you hear is oh mm, doing a good deed with good motivation that's a good karma and if you did something wrong something with a bad motivation that's a bad karma right because buddha is buddha was also very um a skillful you know if he says you know very very buddhist thing to those people they might understand and they might think that oh you know B buddhism got nothing you know for me in return so why why would i have to practice buddhism right because of their ignorant buddha has to be skillful and say things that uh gives them certain hopes that oh if i do that you know i'll get something in return but that's why he said oh do good so when you are sick okay you know chant buddha um, what medicine buddha's mantra you know everything will be fine or the people who are like so close to die they say oh you know chant the mantra of amitofo right then yeah you'll be born in pure land all those stuff was said because you know that's that's basically what those people want and you know buddha has to be skillful and he said and eventually buddha have his own plan so he can teach and uh, show them the truth of reality, right? Of course, Buddha. That's that's how Buddha have worked along um, uh, in 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 his life, right? So yes, but but as I say, you know, the definitions, the definition change, definition change, right? So now, what is the uh, definition of karma? We need to know, like in Abhidharma Kosha. I think it's, it's um, Abhidharma Kosha or something. Um, I don't know the, the in, in Tibetan we call it Ngoma Kuntu, you know, like the collection of all um, higher teachings. Ngoma Kuntu, Abhidharma Kosha. I think, I think so. Ngoma, Ngoma. Right. So it said that um, whatever, right, whatever bring you closer to dharma that's the karma it didn't say whatever uh, makes you happy you know you do something and if that if that thing help you help you to get to be more help a happy person or oh, that, that that's the good karma or do do something good with a good motivation and it will give you something very peaceful pleasurable now that's the good karma it that's how it is said in our very general text, right? But that's not the thing. Whatever brings you closer to Dharma, you know, Dharma, right, is karma, good karma. Now, that's the real definition. And as all of us know, right, um, as we say, you know, suffering is the introduction to the Dharma, right? So see, now if, you know, if you break your, let's say, arm and it gives you, like, it gives you certain um, pain in your heart, right? And you feel of Buddha and Bodhisattva for one moment, that breaking, you know, that, that, you know, uh, arm being broken is also a good karma because it gives you a sense of, uh, you know, like a renunciation mind, right? The reason why we say, you know, the, the, the suffering is introduction to dharma is because 
it's not exactly the feeling, you know, it's not exactly the, the pain that gives you the, uh, um, gives you the, uh, you know, give, makes, uh, gets you closer to the Dharma. It's because, you know, like when, when, we, when we suffer, you know, when we suffer, when we are hurt so bad, let's say when you got cheated, you know, by your own partner, right? At that time, or, you know, I mean, things happen. I mean, then those very bad things happen in your life. And at that time, right? And there is a sense of like hollowness, you know, that you feel so empty inside. And that, you know, um, very empty feelings is actually, you know, when you see no meanings and all those things in samsara. You know, that's the real renunciation mind, you know. So that's why, you know, this the empty feelings that makes you feel, makes you see everything, anything in this world so meaningless, you know, so you don't get attached to all those things. So you are so ready to leave all those things behind. Right. That's the feeling, you know, is brought to you by the sorrow. And that's why the sorrow, pain, hurt is the introduction to a dharma, right? So that's why. So, so that's why, see, even like if you see all those things, you know, all those definitions of uh, like very, um, very Buddhist oriented, you know, very core Buddhist oriented, that's a very hardcore, you know, Buddhist oriented definitions of karma, right? And it got nothing to do with happiness. Yeah, it has nothing to do with happiness. As long as, you know, that, that pain or happiness or, you know, losing your whole money, losing your wife, you know, uh, uh, getting cheated open makes you, you know, uh, closer to dharma practice, which was taught by Buddha, you know, if it gives you the, devotion toward those teachings that's that's a good karma really that's the karma so so in that case right so because why why it is why it is good karma because for us i mean i'm not us i mean hardcore buddhist for those hardcore buddhists right nothing matters only the enlightenment matters to us. That's how it's supposed to be, right? Only enlightenment matters to us because the only thing that we want in our life is to help others free from the suffering. That's why we listen to teaching, contemplate, meditate, see the truth, achieve enlightenment. Then we can, then, you know, like, we can help the sentient beings, right? So for all, you know, for this, right? Happiness, being happy, being chill, being wild, had nothing to do with it. As long as things that help us to fulfill that purpose that is to achieve enlightenment, that's a karma, that's a good karma. So it got nothing to do be, to, to become rich. It got nothing to do be with you know being recognized in your society as uh, someone high or big or something, it got nothing to do with you know being a uh, what uh, director of your center, you know Buddhist big center. It got nothing. It got nothing to do with you know having a beautiful skin, fair skin. It got nothing, really, as long as things that makes you to achieve enlightenment. That's a good karma. For example, you know, um, Diknaga, I think it was Diknaga. I don't know. I'm very bad with, you know, Sanskrit name of our masters. I think it's Diknaga. Oh, I think it's the, I think, I don't know. I'm not very sure it's Diknaga. Chogolombo uh, should. Yeah, it, it, it's a, you know, the, it's a, um, Indian master, right? Let's say, it's, I don't know uh, the, how to say it in Sanskrit. He was an Indian master and he was actually writing, you know, uh, he was um, writing a, a, a one philosophy, let's say. Actually, it was a Tsema, the Pramana. Mm. Yeah, it was, yeah, he was writing a text, right? And 
So, um, um, at the beginning, we have this Trevor Jeba, right? The offering homage in a stanza, right? And he was writing it on the wall, right? Uh, where he was, you know, practicing. So he, he, he wrote, wrote down this homage a stanza on the wall, right? And there was another guy, you know, there, there seems to be another guy with him. Uh, he just erased that. And second time he wrote it, right? Then it got erased again. And he was so sad, you know, I'm doing this thing and like, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm doing this good thing. And still there's some like people doing all this, you know, like bullshit things, right? And he got so pissed and sad at the same time. And he thought, okay, I think, you know, helping whole sentient beings is just a dream now. I cannot even deal with this person who is just keep raising my, you know, homage stanza phrases. So he was he he was holding a chalk right because he, the, the chalk that he used to write down you know the homage homage stanza so he he said right I will throw that chalk I will throw that chalk in deep space and whenever that chalk hits uh, the ground at that very moment you know he will just give up the mind of bodhicitta and at that moment he will just don't give you know like crap about <laughs> achieving enlightenment for all, all sentient beings right then he just throw throw the chalk up in the inner space then he he, he was waiting you know, for that chalk he was expecting the chalk to you know hit the ground right then the chalk never hit the ground then you know to his surprise he looked up in the sky and saw Omanjushiri was <laughs> literally holding that chalk didn't, didn't allow that chalk to touch the ground because if that happened, you know, then the master will never, you know, the master he will give up you know, helping the sentient beings, you know, which is, which is, you know, uh, keeping far from dharma, you know, the greatest one, the practice of bodhicitta, right? That's why Manjushri appear and catch, you know, caught that uh, chalk. Now that's the karma. That's the good karma because why? Because he has that karma, so Manjushri can catch that chalk. Manjushri didn't allow the chalk to hit the ground, right? Because of that, he kept. Because of that, he kept the uh, bodhicitta and kept, you know, uh, practicing the bodhicitta. Now that's the good karma. That's what it means. It got nothing to do with, you know, what. Uh, good things it it gonna bring you in your life. It it means nothing, really. Now that's the definition of karma. So if you see in this, um, if you see Buddhism right in this um angle, and all those oh happy life, enjoying, chill, uh, smooth life, you know, living happy forever, no. It doesn't make any sense to be honest and i'm saying this because this is how a hardcore buddhist are supposed to be so now are we that kind of person you know are you that kind of person are we i'm 100 percent sure i'm not because for me right what happens today for me what makes me uh feel happy for me what makes me feel full when i eat for me what makes me feel good when i drink and doesn't make me grow fat that's happiness for me right now so really i really couldn't care less about enlightenment right now even though i wish i pray but trust me on this you know, because i can say whatever i want you know on, on behalf of myself right for me okay the enlightenment is like super far but i still pray so for me, right, enlightenment is not the thing. Because for me, you know, that's day-to-day, -day, peaceful, happy. And if I can, helping other people, it's my thing. Enlightenment so far hasn't been my thing at all, right? So, so because of this, so I know, right, even though I pray, to be honest, you know, may I achieve enlightenment, right? But what it really matters to me you know, what I really care about right now is 
you know, day to do things in my life. So that's why I don't want to mess up the thing that I want in my daily life, you know, those peace, those happiness, you know, uh, people's love, people's respect, you know, a little bit of, you know, happiness and a little bit of wildness. That's, I, that's what I really appreciate, right? So that's what I'm saying, right? So that's what I'm saying. These things can be achieved by not, not even being a Buddhist. These things can be achieved. For those things, right, you don't have to be Buddhist at all. But what is necessary to have these things in our life is our mind. Really, to be honest, right, what I really care about, the most, mostly what I really care about is my own life, really. But also, you know, just, just because I'm happy, uh, just, be, like, just like, um, like, I also know that, you know, it is impossible to be only happy people, you know, the only, the lone happy person in this world. This is not possible. Right? All of those people in your life are suffering. All of those people in your neighbors are suffering. And I am, you know, the chillest, the warmest, the happiest person in my neighbor. That's not possible. If, you, if I want to be happy, I need those people around me to be happy as well. That's how I will be happy, right? So to be honest, right, for me, when I'm saying, right, I care about my life only doesn't mean that I don't really care about other people because if I really care about my life, I have to care about other people's life as, all, as, as well because it's all interconnected. It's all interlinked. It is not possible to be a lone, happy you know, person in this life. That's why I have to care about others as well. It might sound, it might sound like quite selfish, but it is. It is, right? So that's why. So that's why, basically what, I'm, what I was saying is that I care about my life. Yeah, really. Right now, I couldn't care less about enlightenment. I care about my life. And when you talk about life, what is life now? What's life? Life is just... I don't know, to be honest, right? What is life? I don't know, you know, the, the proper definition, but what makes life is your body and your mind. That's makes the life. Maybe it is a life, but what makes the life that we care so much about is our body and is our mind. Now, these two things are must. Yeah, these two things are something that we must protect at all cost, right? If you want a happy life, if you want a good life, right? These two, your body and your mind is a must thing that has to be protected at all cost. Yeah. And, and to protect these two things, your body and your mind, you don't have to be Buddhist, to be honest. But Buddhist has so much thing to offer for you know, the later part, the mind part. You know, that's why we have to, you know, that's why, um, especially, you know, who has a proper teacher, who has um, a, a privilege to join, you know, those classes, Buddhist classes you know, about mind training. If you get a time to spend, uh, times for those mind training, you know, it will help you very much, especially really. And that, you know, so Buddhists can help you to train your mind, right? So that's why. So this is something that we must understand because people think, you know, oh, to be Buddhist, the purpose is to be happy. No, it's not happiness. Trust me on this, you know, and happiness 
is not something that we should aspire for, really. Now, this is also one very important thing, especially for those uh, who think, you know, oh, my goal is to be a happy person. No, that's not your goal. It sounds so dumb, really. You have to be a happy person every day. As soon as you open your eye in the morning, right? You have to be a happy person. That's not a goal. If that's the goal, right? Then it's mean that until you become a happy person, then you have to live, you know, being super unhappy person. It doesn't make sense at all, really. And to be a happy person, right? It's not that tough, to be honest. There are very simple things that you can practice, spend some time, really. But yeah, simple things can also be very complicated. It depends on what kind of habit that you carry on, you know, what kind of things that you do every day, every morning, every evening, every night, because that's the thing is going to be your habit, right? Yeah, so for those people who think have to be happy, uh, is is a goal right in uh, in their life then that's a messed up thing really and probably i don't blame them right because you know that's what we have been living in life you know is you know like totally not caring about their mind right totally not caring about their body if you don't care about your mind if you don't care about your body then that's it and there's no life really you know it's like I'm here, but I'm not here, right? It's something like that. You know, you are living, but you're also like half dead. It's something like that, really. Yeah. So, yeah. So to be happy, to be, ha you know, to, to be uh, a happy person is not a goal at all. You must know that. And, um, and, 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 and especially, right, about the mind thing. What we must know is that um, is to like um, the first thing, you know, the first thing we, if you want to take care of your life, right? The first thing what we have to develop here is the awareness. Like if you're not aware of your own body, if you're not aware of your own mind, then there's no way we can take care of it, right? There's no way. And that's why we always talk about this. But, uh, the what? Um, Shishin Pai, you know, awareness and, you know, mindfulness. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Right, so that's why we always have to spend uh, time with ourselves, really. For those, most of the people, you know, spending time alone is like a nightmare. That's what I've seen in Taiwan, to be honest. You know, what, this is like one of, of course, for most people, right, they know that, oh, this is, that's it, that, that, that's, that's very obvious, right? But so far, I've never thought like, you know, living alone, you know, I mean, not living alone, being alone. Being alone doesn't mean uh, being lonely, right? It's, it's totally different. Like being alone is like a nightmare for those many people in, you know, I don't know about uh, uh, the America and Europe and other kind of countries because I've, no, uh, I've never been there, you know, and other countries like Singapore and like Hong Kong, I've been there, but for just a month, you know, something like that. But in Taiwan, I've been here for a year, right? So, for many Taiwanese, and you know, what I have seen that being alone is like a nightmare, trust me. Like if they have spent some time, like some days, you know, being alone, then they will just go crazy. You know, really. Like, like they'll even call you, you know, like, oh Rinpoche, I'm you know, like suffering from depression. <laughs> yeah, really. For me, right, being alone is like a vacation. Like it doesn't matter as long as I have a bathroom and you know a water to drink and food to eat. And uh, you know, like especially in Taiwan, summer is so hot. If there's like aircon, you know, trust me, and I can just live. And of course, internet. 
of course, internet, you know, good speed internet, then I can really spend like, doesn't matter, you know, like month, like uh, in my room really, because why that's, that's, that's uh, that, that kind of habit I have built throughout my life, you know, in the last 30 years. So for, yeah, for me, right, living alone is like super easy for many people, you know, living alone is so hard, super hard. They will just go crazy, you know, really. And they also say, oh, I'm suffering from yo yo turn you know, in, in, in Mandarin, they call it. So in English, it's more like a you know, depression, but it's not depression. Just because, you know, you are feeling depressed doesn't mean you are, you know, suffering from depression. It's a totally different thing, to be honest, really. Because of what you think in your mind will manifest in your real life, really. This is a very important thing we, we should know. You know, what you think in your mind will manifest in your real life. If you think you are, um, uh, you are suffering from depression, yeah, you will suffer from depression because our body really listens to our mind. You know, our body follows the order from our mind, right? But yeah, of course, sometimes I also feel depressed sometimes, but it doesn't mean that, that I'm suffering from depression. Right. So these things, you know, like, so that's why to practice awareness really um, is also very important, you know, for all beginners, especially beginners, to spend some time alone. Be aware of your own body, be aware of your own mind, you know, and also the most, not even like more important, is like uh, what it really means to be alone, you know, solitude is that not being affected by others, you know, others comments, others uh, remarks, you know, others um, uh, society's expectation in the community's uh, expectation. You, know, you when you are not being affected by those, when you are not being contaminated by these things, and if you can just enjoy your life, you know, that's the solitude, right? So be, to be happy, you know, we don't need Buddhist things, really. Yet there are so many things that will can be offered by Buddha's teaching. But to be a happy person, you know, really, you don't need Buddhist thing. Something we must understand, right? So to be happy, you know, is not the purpose of you know uh, Buddhism at all, really, because. The reason why we say, oh, the, the ultimate happiness, you know, they, this you know, thing called ultimate happiness. Yeah, it's actually a big lie, you know, ultimate happiness is not happiness. That's why it is called ultimate. We must know, we must, because to get there, you know, like at the, you know, at the end, the happiness you get is not actually happiness. That's the ultimate happiness, you know. So yeah, there's a lot of you know uh, misconception about happiness, all those things, right? <clears throat> so yeah, this also you know like one thing that really scares me. Like I have no, I have not experienced anything about you know the ultimate happiness. So yeah, I was like, oh, maybe that happiness is, may not be happiness at all, right? So so yeah, this 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 is one of the things that we must understand really. Uh, to achieve enlightenment, you know, it's not to be, you know, like the happiest uh, moment in your life. No, because to achieve enlightenment is not about, because we, because for us, right, what the definition of happiness is getting something more, right? You know, better days, better hours, better salary, you know, better drink, better wife, better house. It's all about getting more and more. Because as I say, you know, definitions matters the worst, matters the, matters the most definition, right? Uh, because our culture, you know, and our culture and our habit gives us the definition, you know, it creates a definition in our mind. And yeah, when we get a thing that is being defined by our society and our habit, and that's the happiness. When it is, you know, totally go against our culture and uh, against our happiness, the definitions, right? Then this is not happiness. For example, right, one thing that I have really uh, also seen in like, in, uh, uh, discover in Taiwan is like, you know, a man can ask for my WhatsApp and Instagram and all these things, you know, it's so, it's so, it's so like normal, you know, like if, if I'm while well, hanging out with my, the people that take care of me, 
they're totally okay. You're like, oh no, good answer. You know, like a guy is asking from which is, you know, uh, WhatsApp, IG, you know, Instagram, all those things. But if a woman <laughs> asks for my IG and you know, uh, the WhatsApp, and they're oh, a woman asking, a woman that woman is asking. Like for them, it's like a nightmare. For them, it's like a surprise of their life. Like some, it, it, it should never happen. It's weird. I I I found it like weird. You know, if I like handshake a man, it's quite okay. It's not totally okay, I guess. But if I if I handshake a woman, you know, like that's it. Like you know, I'm. This might be my moment <laughs> to leave. Uh, Taiwan, you know, it's something like that, right? So totally shocked. But for me, right, there's no difference. If I can shake a man's hand, why not a woman's hand? What's the difference, really? Of course, there are so many things, you know, like against our rules, all those things. But yeah, it's, you know, like uh, in Vinaya, we are not supposed to touch women, you know, you know. We are also not supposed to touch, you know, gold. We're also not supposed to touch money, but we do. And that's not the problem, you know. But as I say, as I as I say, you know, the definitions uh, matters the world most, right? So for us, what's the definition of happiness? It's getting more all the time, right? But what is enlightenment? It's losing everything that that we have, right? Enlightenment. That's what it is, you know. Like when we talk about the wisdom, right? It's not actually getting, you know, like more stuff, you know, more quality in. In, in, in your mind, no, it's just, you know, it's, we are losing those bad stuff that has been stained, you know, that has stained our nothingness in our mind, right? The thing that has no essence, but those dirt, you know, put the dirt has stained our, you know, the nothingness and it looks like something. And that's why you think, you know, oh, like adding more and getting more things is like, uh, no, no, enlightenment is something like getting more stuff. No, it's not. Enlightenment, getting rid of all those things. Yeah, getting rid of wisdom, getting rid of Buddha, getting rid of all the conceptions, getting rid of everything. That's the, at the end, that's the enlightenment. You know, it's about really getting rid of everything. So see, it's totally against our definitions of happiness. We are losing everything. We are supposed to be, you know, so sad, crying when you, you know, when we achieve enlightenment because we got nothing, you know. It's just, you know, going back to our uh, our f- first place, right? So yeah. So see, uh, for uh, because I know all of you guys. I'm 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 saying those basic things, right? It's, because I know you, all of you guys have learned Buddhism for many years. I'm pretty sure. But the thing is that, as 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 you know, as me, I have also spent a lot of years um, studying Buddhism. But the the reason why I am telling you this is because the more you learn. You know, the more you forget about those simple things in our life, really. Like once you once you used to be a very humble person, but because of your humbleness, people kind of trust you, people kind of respect you and make you, you know, the director of, you know, like a society or center. Yeah, then when you become a director, you know, then you totally forgot what makes you the director, you know, which is your humbleness, which is your honesty. Oh, I'm director, you know, I'm like president of my society. So, you know, how why do I have to give or you know F about any of you guys? Right? So that's what I'm saying, you know, the more you learn, the more we the more advanced teachings, you know, the more advanced Buddhists we come we become, right? Without a reminders, we always uh, forget those basic things that what makes us the advanced, you know. Uh, uh, in, in Buddhism, in terms of knowledge and not in terms of practices. Yeah. So in terms of practice, if you want to become very hardcore Vajrayana practice practitioner, right? What you should do all, all, always is always remind of those simple things that you do. You know, that you have learned 
that you were taught by your teachers, you know, on day one, on day second, on the first week of your study, you know, when you become a Buddhist, really. Because mm, uh, for example, you know, because that's, that's something that I have learned, like, uh, let's say we are going for a hike, hike, right, which is very, like, very dangerous thing, you know, a lot of things might happen you know, when you go for hiking. And yeah, when you are, when you are hiking, you know, in, in, in the, when there is so many uh, dangerous and you, when you know things might happen at that time, you know, uh, chances of something bad happening to you is very less because you are scared. You are afraid. You are very aware of, you know, things around you, right? So chances of you doing something wrong, you know, something bad happening to you is much lesser. But whenever you just loosen up all those, you know, uh, sense of insecurity, sense of scaredness, right? That's the time, you know, um, things might happen. When you uh, put off all your guards down, right? Yeah, at that time, things might happen. And for us, we think, oh, 20 years of experience in Buddhism, right? I have know so much. So that's the time when you really like putting your guards off, you know, those basic essence, you know, like very, uh, the essenceful teachings that what makes you the advanced uh, Buddhist, so-called Buddhist, we should not forget about those. That's why I'm reminding you. I'm not, I'm not teaching you guys because you guys have already known all those things, right? But I'm reminding you, right, that, even though 20 years of ages, 20 years of you know, studies in Buddhism, yeah, if there is no humbleness in you, if there is no compassion in you, if there is no sense of security in you, if there is no love, if there is no you know, uh, mm, strength to face the fear, strength to face the challenges in your life, 20 years of you know, practices is all, you know, down the toilet, really. It means nothing. So that's why I'm saying, you know, the mind training, it's very, very important. We must train our mind. And how we should train our mind? It's simple, you know, spend more time. Yeah, spend more time learning, reading those teachings uh, of mind training. You know, it's, in, in Sakya, we, also, we have very, very, uh, good mind training teachings by you know Lama Hangalo Rambuchis, you know uh, who um, have uh, who um, was of like a root guru of 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 his holiness forty first, yeah, and he was also you know like a, a Kempo. He was he, actually he was he was a Kempo, you know, but he was a very successful one in, in terms of practices. So he was also you know a Kempo in my monastery for a short while, you know, in Tibet. So yeah, uh, I, I really, for me, right, the thing that I really want in my life, the thing, the problems that I really don't want in my life can be, you know, uh, I can achieve and I can neglect all those things, right? Just doing mind training practices, really. The problem that I don't want in my life can be removed by this mind training. We don't, I don't need all those advanced teachings of Buddha and Bodhisattvas. I don't need it. Because I say, you know, I don't, I'm not talking about enlightenment. I'm talking about day-to-day, -day peaceful, happy, you know, life. Me, for me, and people around me. These things. Ah, so what's your problem? Now, you can, ask your, you can ask yourself, what's your problem and what's your goal? Enlightenment, that's it. Then don't, you know, don't be a, a baby when someone, you know, like, uh, uh, says something uh, mean. To you because well, I have I, I kind of remember I don't know where maybe it's in Malaysia or Singapore I'm not very sure you know like yeah he claimed to be very hardcore Buddhist right hardcore Buddhist and he was like oh Rinpoche, you know, I'm doing this blah 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 I said oh nice nice yeah uh, you know best of luck and yeah I want you to you know practice more you know it's, it's good you know but and and there was a question you know, Rinpoche, there was a guy who's always like kind of you know say and make a like oh, weird remarks on me 
and say things about me. And I say, oh, you're a hardcore Buddhist, right? Why you are you giving, you know, like shit about like what he think about you and what he said about you, right? For you, you know, only things matter is the enlightenment. You know, you should definitely look at, look at him as some ignorant, you know, like small you know, old baby. So you don't have to be, you don't have, you should not be affected by what he says, you know. But if you get, if your mind get messed up because he says something, it's totally, it's your fault. It's nothing to do with that guy because he has no control over your mind, you know. You are the one who has to be in charge of your mind. And he said, no, you know, like, it doesn't matter, you know. If he says something to me, I'm going to say something back to him. Like, everything is equal, right? So see, so there's no hardcore Buddhist trait in that person. Like, he cares about what others think about him, and it, it affects him so much. So it's mean that, you know, for him, there's no sense of compassion toward that person. There's no like sense of, um, you know, like uh, loving kindness toward the person. You know, I will achieve enlightenment so I can help this guy. You know, this guy is literally in front of you and you are so pissed off right now instead of being, you know, helpful and kind. You know, so these things happen really. But so you ask yourself, really, is, is enlightenment is the only thing that you want? Uh, because in our monastery, right? He said, um, do you want to, uh, because he, he's always very, uh, very, how to say, uh, yeah, he is always like so much into, you know, the worldly stuff, you know, money, car, house, watches. And he also like a monk and, uh, and his teacher, you know, asked him, hey, what you want to be, you know, what you want to live, what kind of life you want to live? You want to live a very spiritual life? Or you want to live a very worldly life? And he said, oh, Guru, you know, uh, I want to live both like <laughs> spiritual and worldly life at the same time, which is not possible, right? So yeah, as I say, we need to be aware of our own body and our own mind. And you got to ask ourselves and you got to ask yourself what you want. You know, what's the purpose of all those things? Yeah, make things clear, right? What's, what you want and what you don't want. And according to that, then you can, you know, lay out your plan. Like, what should I study? What should I not study? Something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And last thing, right? It's important that... It's important to be kind, really. For me, as, as I say, I'm not a hardcore Buddhist. You know, I really don't think much about enlightenment. Yeah, as I, I know, yet I, I pray for it, but... And that to be kind, you know, to be uh, nice to other people is very important, really. But there's also, a, there, will, there will also be a point where you, where you need to know, you know, when to stop being good and nice and where to stop being good, being good and nice to others. Otherwise, people might take advantage of you, you know, those things. So you have to be aware. The point is you have to be aware. You try, we all as a human being, we try our best to others. That's our responsibility that is not given to us later in our life, but we're born with such responsibility. We are human. We need to be good to others. But just because, you know, he was, uh, just because, uh, he, um, um, you know, there's a thing, um, there's a thing like, you know, for me, right, I have this attitude, you know, um, just because you are not my friend doesn't mean, you know, doesn't, doesn't uh, it doesn't turn you into my enemy really you know we used to be a friend but i unfriend you and you are not my friend it doesn't mean you are my enemy right i want you to be happy right there's a there's a very very famous uh rapper you know uh, like a legend you know called tupac tupac i think some of you guys know he said you know i want you to have a good lunch but not at my table you know yeah it's something like that, you know, if there's a people that really hurt you, if there's a people that say things about you, you know, like stab, especially for me, if, if my own friend stabbed me, you know, from at the back, yeah, it, it hurt a lot. So those things, right, and those things, what I really do is that, you know, remove those people from my life, really. But yeah, I want them to be, I want them to have a good life, right? So it's something like that, you know, we need to know, 
we need to know what's the limit. You know, we need to be aware of everything around us. If we are not aware, then our all guards, you know, our all, how to say, safety, all those paddings that we create for ourselves to protect so we don't get hurt, yeah, it's down. So we always have to keep our guard up by being aware. That's the only way, right? So something like that, you know, please, all of you guys are very advanced practitioner, I know, right? But yeah, never forget about, you know, those basic things, you know, for fund for fundamental things, you know, that foundation of, of, our, of our human nature, the foundation of our, you know, practices, which is very important, right? So please keep it up. Never forget, be happy with each other, you know? Yeah, and especially if you are living together, if you are like working together, it's important that we work together happily, harmonious, what harmoniously, right? Yeah, um, yeah. If you if if not, yeah, don't try to throw shades at others. You know, <laughs> don't say mean things. You know, don't talk about others behind their back. Yeah, be nice to each other. If not, yeah, be don't don't be you know bad to others, something like that. And we can transform. That's how we have to transform. Yeah, and yeah, we have to. Uh, be someone that can you know stand up on our own feet and challenge accept the challenge yeah if, if, if you cannot accept the challenge you know don't don't even think about being buddhist you know you won't even be able to live in this world and it's yeah life is basically you know it's full of challenges and those challenges you know is the only the, the, the bad thing about these challenges are that it's so unexpected you know it happens without any notice yeah, so be, be, be ready, you know, because everything is impermanent as our Trigula Papa himself, he, he, he himself said, right? So everything might happen, but yeah, we have to be prepared, you know, for everything that we have. We need the courage to face those challenges so we can change ourselves, so we can become someone better than we were yesterday, not better than someone else. Yeah, don't compare. Be better than what you were like two minutes ago. That's why, that's how we are supposed to move on, you know. That's how we are supposed to improve ourselves, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And if there's any question regarding the uh, teaching, uh, yeah, please be, um, yeah, uh, straightforward. Yeah, thank you very much, thank you very much. We see you next session again. Thank you so much. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Mm, Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.